Happy holidays, everyone. It is Bryant Cook, and today I am playing Modern Living End Combo, and this is Sodex Deckless. They went 6-1 and one in a Modern Challenge with it. I've made no changes. I'm just going to try it out today. I've actually never played this deck before, but it shouldn't be, you know, a surprise to you that I'm interested in playing the deck with cycling creatures in another format. I play a lot of cycling and pauper. Today, branching out into Modern, I'm usually more of a Storm person in this format, but I really like the idea of cycling creatures. So here we are. And this deck list, I mean, it seems pretty straightforward to me if I'm being completely honest. So we have our key card, Living End, which you put all creatures from your graveyard into play and all creatures that are in play into the graveyard. You know, it's a nice swap. And then we, well, how do we cast this, right? Like we're not really going to use the suspend, right? So instead we're going to use Violent Outburst and then the Charless Agent to cascade into this living end which we can then cast for free circumventing the suspend three effect so that's really how this deck works you're never actually looking to suspend the center and four you can though because of the sunken ruins it does uh tap to activate for double black which allows you to suspend living end or cast grief whoops there we go we have a grief so the sunken ruins is in here for that otherwise every land in the deck is rug colored for these two cascade cards then we have some protection we have force and negation to stop chalice of the void because chalice of the void for zero does hurt this deck quite a bit so force and negation stops that same thing with teferi force is really there to stop those powerful effects but just in case they resolve we do have brazen borrower uh, as a little bit of a backup plan when you living end it back you do not get the petty theft ability so it's just a 3-1 flyer but, you know, Petty Theft is still really strong on its own from our hand. So that's why we play ba blah. <laughs> Brazen Borrower. There we go. Talking's difficult. Please forgive me. Um, and then Charlotte's Agent, we covered that. And then we have uh, Curator, Architect, Street Wraith, Strip River Winder, and then Waker of Waves. All those creatures that put themselves to the graveyard while cycling or doing something else. And then we have Grief as an additional protection spell. Once again, it hits the Shells of the Void. It hits Teferi. Those are the reason why we play these effects. And this is really a good home for Grief, in my opinion. Having played against this deck a bunch, uh, Evoke Grief, Living End Grief, it's backbreaking, especially when you're backing it with Force and Negation. So this deck's really powerful. I'm excited to see what it can do today. In the sideboard, we have Living End. Or <laughs> Leyline of Sanctity. Once again, I cannot talk. I don't know why. I apologize. Leyline of Sanctity. And the idea behind Leyline of Sanctity is that it's really good against the red black decks that are really popular right now, but it has a hidden mode that you might not think of. And it's very similar to Oops All Spells and Legacy. It stops Endurance. Endurance targets a player. Leyline gets around that. And yeah, so expect me to board this in against like an Amulet Titan if we get paired into it, or even the Mirror. Uh, Leyline is there to stop Endurance. Mystical Dispute gets around that whole uh, Violent Outburst Cascade thing, so that's the big reason to play Mystical Dispute. Once again, it stops to Fairy, which is huge. Brazen Borrower, an additional effect for Chalice of the Void. Same thing with this Foundation Breaker down here, but Foundation Breaker can also come in against Hammer Time. Well, I guess the Brazen Borrower can too, but it's really there to slow down Hammer Time, answer Chalice, that sort of thing. There's one card in the sideboard I'm not super uh, sure about, and that's Subtlety. I don't know what exactly, what matchup this is for. I guess I'll try to figure it out throughout the league, but I'm not super sure on Subtlety. Endurance is obviously for Graveyard decks, and then the Force of Vigor for Hammer Time, plus other things. That's the deck list. Once again, this is not mine. It is Sodex. So if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer those in the comment section down below, but I can't guarantee anything. I'm sorry. I'm not a living end expert, but I do love cycling creatures. So hopefully I have some fun today. Hopefully you enjoy watching it. And if you're interested, here are some ways that you can support us. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. That said, there's no better way of showing your support than becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks, and we get to keep making combo content. The perks get better and better each level you go up. They also stack. To start off, with our Storm Fan tier, you unlock our private member section of our Discord, which comes with a highlighted user profile, and then some awesome badges and emotes for YouTube. Looking for 
cyborg help? Become a stormtrooper, our middle tier, for two cyborg guides of your deck choice every single month, on top of 50% off donation decks. Did we mention you also get 10% off merchandise from our shop? With our top tier, the Combo Cabal, you get a free donation deck every single month, 15% off merchandise from our shop, early access to private deck lists, and the most valuable perk in my opinion, videos early. That's right, you heard it, early access to all videos. But maybe sweet perk, secret deck list, early access to videos isn't for you, but you'd still like to show your appreciation. Make sure to check out the epicstorm.com slash shop for card singles and storm swag. Please don't forget to use your membership discounts. Finally, if you want to see your combo deck here on this very YouTube channel, make sure to visit theepicstorm.com slash donation decks, where all you have to do is attach your TXT file and pick a donation tier. With our epic tier, you can even join me in a video to showcase your bold brew in person and explain the ins and outs of your strategy. Card availability won't be an issue due to our new sponsor, Card Hoarder. With Card Hoarder, renting is super easy. If you're looking to get into Magic Online, there isn't a better, more affordable solution than Card Hoarder. Fun fact, you can rent the Epic Storm for seven tickets a week, which is just a great deal. There are many ways you can support us. Just pick whatever is best for you. In the meantime, let's play some Magic. Welcome to match number one. We're on the draw. I'm going to actually pop out our graveyard right now. And let's keep this. We don't have a blue card for this Force of Negation. But we can potentially cycle into them with Street Wraith. Godless Shrine. I wonder what that means. I'm not sure. Draw. Okay, a second Cascade spell is a very good pickup. Let's see what they do. Is this Hammer? Grief. That's annoying. Yep. So they get to take our Force of Negation here and then Ephemerate the Grief. So they're going to get three cards out of our hand. Interesting. They took the... Okay, so we're going to try to Force of Negation this. Okay, so let's cycle the Street Wraith. Alright, no dice. Cycle. And we hit... We're going to force this. And now we need to dodge a, another discard spell before turn three. Okay, draw. That was a good one. Unfortunately, we don't have another cycler, so we do have to just pass here. If we do cast the Violent Outburst... They will get back grief. Worth noting. Draw. Brazen Borrower. Player land and pass. Okay, so our opponent is just passing on their fourth turn. It looks like they don't have anything here. I'm not going to cast the Violent Uppers because I'd like to get a little bit more equity out of it first. I guess I can hard cast this grief. I didn't think I'd actually get to use the sunken runes here. So props to Sodak. It's just good deck building. Uh, let's cast this grief. <laughs> if I could evoke it, I would. Uh, because I'd rather it come back with the violent outburst, but this is fine too. Okay. Wonder why they didn't persist last turn. Let's remove that. Okay, that was interesting. So they could play the Skyclave here, and we knew that they drew this. They're just not interested in playing Skyclave. Let's get in there. Ugh, I'm an aggro deck. And they're going to draw a card off Silent Clearing, which is fine. Another land, and they're passing. Okay, let's cycle this curator and draw a card. Force of negation. I, I could flash in the borrower here, 
and then they would put them down to 11 to force them to extend into the living end. I think I'm going to do it. Draw. All right, so they'll take six and go to 11. You could argue that maybe I'm supposed to main phase the Master of Waves looking for an additional land, but I feel like that's like kind of risky for no reason. Like, why do you need to do that? Okay, so let's use the Master of Waves. Or Waker of Waves. I'm sorry, Master of Waves is the merfolk that makes creatures, right? That doesn't sound very good. Uh, we'll take Charlotte's Agent. Draw. Another Outburst. Let's get in there. Okay, our opponent's at five. We've yet to even cast a living end. Mm. Sure. So we know that they have double ephemerate. Um, maybe I'm supposed to outburst here. Whoops, I tapped wrong. Forgive me. So now if they want to remove either of these creatures, they'd have to do it now. The downside is that they do get to remove a creature that I bring back. And our opponent just conceded. Okay, so apparently I made the right play. Uh, let's bring in those ley lines. Probably want some number of Foundation Breaker in case they have ley line of the void. Hmm. I'm not like super sure on how to board here, so bear with me. I'm kind of learning as I go. It didn't seem like this was a great force and negation matchup. Like only hitting like ephemerates and stuff doesn't seem that good. So maybe we take those out. Is this supposed to be the subtlety matchup? I, I'm not sure. It does counter grief, but two cards for one. Eh. Maybe we take out like two wakers. Or we could possibly take out grief. Probably not though. Let's just try this out. Some of you are probably like screaming at your computer monitors right now about how I don't know what I'm doing and that you'd be right. So uh, congratulations. Or I don't know what I'm doing. I might have misspoke there. But let's keep this. Seems fine. Godless Shrine. Okay, draw. Just play out the Misty. We want to thin a little bit before we start cycling. Okay. Incoming Grief. Stoneforge. Rest in peace. Stoneforge. Okay. Black White Stone Blade. And they got Cauldra. Okay, so now I'm going to go get the Breeding Pool. I will shock myself and cycle the Curator of Mysteries. Another land. Not ideal. That's the turn. So I doubt they kept a hand on the back of turn two Stoneforge, so this would pro probably be a turn that you're looking to disrupt us. And Grief, removing Undying Evil. So I think that tells the story that they're light on black cards. Or they just have an Ephemerate. Okay. And grief goes to the graveyard, so they're light on black cards. This. Interesting, they chose not to use that. They didn't put Cauldra into play. Interesting. Let's cycle here. We're digging for another Cascade spell. How lucky. Cycle. Cycle. And draw. Another land. Jeez. Okay, so we're going to let them put Cauldra into play. They did miss out on some damage, though. 
Batter Skull. So they have both Batter Skull and Cauldra. So maybe it was intentional that they didn't put it into play. I think I'm supposed to cast this outburst now. What's happening? Is this a Kai's Guile? Did I punt by not doing this on my own turn? Uh, I might have punted. Yep. Uh, well, I, I didn't even think of Kai's Guile until our opponent tapped three mana. Okay, play poorly, get punished. That's the lesson here. That was avoidable. <laughs> so bad. Oh, geez. Okay. Um, I'm just going to resubmit. Okay, on the play for the third game. Let's not just play into our opponent's tricks. This seems fine. We'll keep this. Put the ley line into play. All right, so we have a ley line of sanctity. And we'll play the turn to start off. We don't have to worry about grief anymore, which is kind of nice. And I believe this also stops Kai's Guile. I need to... Uh, can I hover on this and read? I can't. All right, chat log is useless. All right, I will take two and cycle the curator. Riverwinder. A pauper loved card for me. I'll go to 15. I wonder if I'm supposed to double cycle or use Waker. I don't actually know the answer here. I feel like it's probably double cycle. All right, untap second land. Is this a Stoneforge? Remorseful. It, it targets. <laughs> All right, so that card doesn't matter. Leyline looking really good right here. Okay, let's cycle this. Cycle. Untap, draw. All right, let's cycle these Street Wraiths trying to hit a Cascade spell this turn. Cycle the Street Wraith, down to 11. Down to nine. Ah. All right, I have to pass, unfortunately. I took the chance there on cycling it, on the triple cycle. Uh, we didn't hit, but that's fine. We're 25% of the way through our deck. Okay, so this is going to knock me down to 7 life. Okay. They're passing. Glad blue, blue. Cycle the Riverwinder. Riverwinder and Curator. Okay, draw. Jeez. Okay, so I think I'm just going to pass here. And I might Brazen Borrower the Cleric just to buy time. We're 33% of the way through our deck at this point. So the fact that we haven't found one of our eight Cascade cards is pretty unlikely. Uh, this grief doesn't do a whole lot because of the ley line. Okay, so they're at five cards now in hand. Let's add blue again and then add blue, blue. I'm going to petty theft this. I just don't want to get too low on life. Okay, so the petty theft resolved. And they're still holding up three mana. That means that... The Kai's Guile might be effective. I'm just going to pass the turn. You know, I can look up Kai's Guile. L let me just do that real quick. I'm sorry. Exile all opponents' graveyards. It does not target. Okay, so I think I'm going to flash in the uh, Brazen Borrower here. Um, uh, I'm not going to cycle the Architects. I'm going to hang on to it. Okay, another land. Let's just get in there. And on their end step, I'll cycle the Architect. 
And Cleric is back. Okay, cycle this Architects. And I'm trying to pretend that I have the Violent Outburst so that way they don't tap out. Or try to exile my graveyard. I'll be able to cast these things soon. Okay. Let's get in there. So I could try to hit the outburst here. I mean, there's four of them and 35 cards. I'm going to take the chance. And I hit. Okay, so blue. I'm sorry, I need green. That was a lucky uh, surveil we hit there. Not actually surveil, but you know what I mean. Woot woot. All right, cast the living end. Leyline doing work. Target my opponent with the architect. Look at the card. So there's supposed to be a bug here. Uh, I've heard about this, but I've never experienced it before. So I'm supposed to be able to rearrange these, but I can't. I can only look at them. Oh, maybe they fixed it. So I feel like the land might be the most dangerous card here. Okay. And I sacrifice a creature. Brazen Borrower, I guess. And pass the turn. I have four stripped river winder into play. This is so awesome. I love it. <laughs> I actually own four Japanese foil stripped river winder for Popper. I got a really good deal on them. They were like $15 each if you wanted to buy them individually. And I ended up like getting a notification from Haruya that they had a complete set uh, for $3 each, and I wasn't going to pass that up. So I ended up getting a full play set for less than one. Now they get their Solitude back. So the Ephemerate thing didn't actually work out here because I wasn't thinking about Solitude. And another Ephemerate. Okay. Well, no matter what happens here, they cannot uh, Ephemerate away my Strip River Winders. Okay. They're at 14. And I can just cast this Waker. <laughs> so that way these would only be two power. Yes. Okay, I can't believe I'm doing this. I, I can already tell that I love this deck. One match in. Hard cast Waker. Boom. And our opponent concedes. How about that? That's match number one. I played terribly and I still won. That's how you know this deck is good. I hope you enjoyed it. I love cycling. Stick around. Watch a little bit more of this video. Cheers. Uh, I'll see you in match number two. If you haven't joined them already, I would recommend opening up our description down below and joining our seven social media networks. They're each great in their own way, but I would strongly suggest joining our Discord server. In there, you will find others just like you looking to improve their Storm game and grow as a combo community. If you're a member of our YouTube channel, you should sync your account to Discord to unlock our private member section that has the latest and greatest deck lists, concepts, and much, much more. Let's get back to comboing out. Welcome to the second match. Our opponent has revealed a Yorian. I don't really know what that means. It could be modern death and taxes. It could be elementals. I've seen elementals with Yorian. I've also seen a bunch of those four color piles recently, so it's tough to say, but it's pretty hard to deny this hand where we have a bunch of cyclers. We have our cascade spell. I think that this hand is just ultimately a keep. Forest. Okay, so this is likely one of the four color decks, I believe. So this is a matchup where we're going to have to worry a little bit about endurance. And the second violent upper or the second cascade spell was pretty good. Okay. I guess with our opponent being on the play, we're looking to dodge it to fairy. Okay. 
I wonder what they're doing here. Are you Enchantress? They're not Enchantress. I wonder why they got Temple Garden. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Okay, I'm going to shock myself here and cycle a Riverwinder. Okay, another red source. Borrower was very good. And we'll pass the turn now. What I like about Borrower is it does answer to Fairy. Land number three. They're quickly fetching. I don't love that. All right. All right, Expressive. Not to Fairy. Thank you. That makes the fetch on the second turn even more... Um, weird because they could have fetched so that way they could cast iteration on the second on turn three while still having a land drop available or now they pretty much have to hit something like abundant growth in order to get two cards off of it omnath yeah like that's a perfect example where that could have been a land that they could then play okay so i'm probably going to take one from the ice fang here and no attacks respecting my uh deck i guess okay grief was a good one let's see if we can cycle into a black card speaking of a black card one that we uh it's probably fine all right let's exile this living end grief good grief target the opponent it doesn't really matter the order that i do it in I guess, theoretically, I could hit Endurance this way, so it might have been better to do it the other way. They just have straight nothing. Let's get rid of that Fury. Oh, no! I'm a dummy! I didn't want to put Fury to the graveyard? Oh, that was stupid. I should learn how to play Magic. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, yeah. That was just n not good. One day I'll learn. Should have taken the bolt there, I think. Because by taking bolt, it leaves them in a position where if they want to cast Fury, they need to pitch the Omnath. Yeah, that was just a bad play by me. Alright, they're attempting to cast the Omnath, I believe. So, white off the plains, green off temple. There you go. You got it. Okay. And now they're passing. Oh. I guess it doesn't matter if I cast this outburst now. Like, I take one less damage, Like, but this coming back at the end step literally has no impact. So we're going to cast this. We have one more living end in our deck. And now the Fury comes back and it gets to pick off the curator or grief not both another fury hmm i think i take the bolt okay so on our turn we get to get in there draw i'm one point short of lethal I guess they can't block the grief, right? Like it has menace. Oh, but they could block the river winders. So let's attack. I think I'm actually just gonna brazen borrower the fury here. Put them to one. It shuts off their fetch land. Okay, and we got game number one over this elemental stack. Or four color, or whatever you'd like to call it. I'm not trying to be a stickler here. Um I mean, the ley lines seem pretty good at stopping endurance. I don't think I want to board in Foundation Breaker. I think in order to beat the Chalice and Teferi, I want to rely on Brazen Borrower. And then, like, do I want to bring in Disputes here? I'm not even sure if I do. The question is, what do I take out? Their best card against us is definitely going to be Endurance. Maybe I just take out griefs. Is that crazy? 
Or maybe grief is good because it forces their hand on endurance in games where I don't have Leyline. So maybe I need the griefs. Uh, this is tough. Maybe it's just Wakers. Maybe this is where I board in subtlety. Oh my, did I just solve it? <laughs> uh, this might actually be it. Maybe I don't board in the ley lines. Maybe this is it. Let's try this out because ley lines doesn't seem that great against this deck. Uh, I could be wrong, but who knows? And our opponent has revealed their Yorian. That's fine. We're going to try this. I have a bunch of cyclers. I can double cycle for land number two if I need to. Okay, and our opponent kept six cards. They're just going to pass. Draw. Cascade spell, not the worst, but I do need to find some lands. Okay. This deck's really sweet. I'm like contemplating if I should start building this or not. I mean, I own a lot of it already, just like the cycling creatures. I have nice force negations. I don't own endurance or force of vigor. I don't know. None of you care about that. Let's just get back to playing magic. And let's cycle curator mysteries. Hey, land. I'll take two. Okay, and they're fetching. Face Fang is fine. What I like about hands like this is you get a lot of ability to sculpt. Just like having this many cyclers. So like by the time that I want to try to cast Living End, I can have like Force of Negation and uh, Subtlety or uh, Grief up. I'm at 17. Let's cycle this Curator. Another Street Wraith. Okay, cycle. Living end, not ideal. Draw. Oh, starting to look a little dicey. All right, let's fetch. Grab an island. I'm gonna cycle. Street wraith, looking for grief. Cycle. Okay, that's pretty good. So let's cast this. Touch the living end. So I want to use it so that I click the evoke first, so that way the discard happens before we go to the graveyard. Veil of Summer. Okay. Maybe I should respond to this. Because this might be a good time to try to jam the last living end. Okay. What do you have? Okay. Oh, our opponent just conceded. Nice. All right, 2-0. I don't know. This deck seems really good. I like it so far. Let's see how the rest of this league goes. Playing your favorite combo deck and paper just got so much easier with the Epic Storm mini token pack. You can pick one up at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $13. It includes 64 double-sided mini tokens. That's 128 tokens total. And they include 10 black, 10 blue, 10 red, 5 green, 5 white, 3 colorless, 20 storm counters. That means that you can count your way all the way up to 20 for grape shot everyone's favorite Stormwind condition, a Galvanic Relay Exile Indicator, four treasure tokens for Strike It Rich, and then 10 monk tokens for our vintage friends. It also has Slime Time Live! Eve Progenitor Ooze tokens with the power and toughness already built in to make playing in paper so much easier. No fumbling around with dice, we've got you covered. Make sure to go grab those if you're playing modern. And then Squirrels vs. Goblins, Chatterstorm vs. Empty the Warrens, the Battle of the Ages. You definitely need 20 Squirrel tokens and 20 Goblin tokens. You're going to love this mini token pack, I promise. And once again, you can grab that at theepicstorm.com slash shop.
Match three, we're on the play. Let's get it. Luris. So we've opened up a living end that's not ideal. But I do think the rest of this hand is good enough where I'm willing to try this out. Okay. Spire Bluff Pass. Bobble, okay. Red Black. Okay, so this might be a difficult matchup. Wood Crypt down to 17. Monkey. Sure, let's cycle the Riverwinder. Okay, so we want a land here. Grief. I like playing Grief here. Okay. Get rid of that Thoughtseize. And now I just need to find a, another land for next turn. But actually would be them doing us a favor if they played the Croxa. All right, so monkey getting in. We're going to fall to 18 life. They'll get a treasure. No! Damn, now we only have one more living end in our deck. Okay. So they're going to fetch. Please play Croxa. They did it. All right, I'm going to discard this Waker. Okay, come on, deck. Please give me a land. Cycle the Riverwinder. Cycle Riverwinder. Come on. One more chance. Oh, deck hates me. All right, Cycle Architects. Okay, so I just have to wait a turn. All right, Ragavan, do not do that again. So you have Inquisition. That's something that happens. Fortunately, I did draw an extra Cascade spell. Um, we know that they have Steam Vent still. They've used their Delta. So I don't know one card in their hand. Now Monkey gets in. Are you kidding me? Oh my, that was the third living end. Wow. Oh, that's not good. <sighs> oh, love magic. <laughs> oh. What are the odds? Well, I guess the odds were 1 in 46 and they hit. Jeez, we just lost just like that. All right, so we just have to concede and go to the next game. I can't win the game. All of our living ends are gone. I could theoretically like try to play the fair game, but we're not going to beat that with what our opponent's hand is. Oh, jeez, that was miserable. I'm speechless. So I think we probably want the borrower. I don't think we want the foundation breakers. We might want the disputes. That would put us at 65. I think we can probably cut the Wakers. The card, like, seems kind of clunky to me. Maybe I just do, like, one Dispute. I don't really want to take out Creatures. But also, like, is this a Force and Negation matchup? I'm not sure if it is. I guess it hits, like, their Chalice, and if they have Grave Hate... Hmm. Just don't know. Maybe a shave of grief. Let's try this out. That's probably not right. I don't think I'm allowed to board out grief. I'm just gonna do one dispute. I felt like I was going to win that first game too until that living end uh thing happened. Damn, Ragavan way too good. Way too good. All right, game two. What are we going to do here? I mean, this seems fine. Keep. 
We're gonna take some mulligan. Okay, Drank him pass. The plan currently is to cycle Curator and Street Wraith. The issue with cycling the Curator is it's our blue card for Force Negation. All right, Delta, activate for what? Watery Grave. All right, use your thoughts. These, they're probably just going to take the Violent Outburst here. I don't think I'm in a position where I want to force a thought seize. Okay. So now we cycle. And we found our other cascade spell. Um, I think I'm in a shock here. I guess I could have played the Sanctum, but I don't want our opponent knowing that we drew it. Alternatively, we could have played the Ruins. I don't know. Land number two, channeler, sure. Looks like they're passing. Come uh, on, we want running creatures here. Ah, oh, damn. Draw. Am I supposed to living end? I think so. Cast it. Only getting back two creatures isn't the best here. All right, so I've been pierced. Yeah. Okay. So our opponent is one card away from Delirium as well. Iteration. Doesn't give them Delirium. Maybe the Surveil will. Okay, Bolt. Bobble. And Bobble will give them the Delirium. Sure. Okay, so they're going to attack us to 13. They've yet to play a land. We're falling to 13 life, as I mentioned. So they could have something post combat, which is why I'm not hitting the F6 key. They don't. All right, four cards in our opponent's hand. They do get the draw a card off Bobble going up to five. Cycler was good. So let's do that. Another cycler. Let's get in. Play a land. And I think I'm supposed to just try to do this while they're tapped out. Charlotte's agent number two. If they have a force negation, they have a force negation. Target them. Okay, so they can have Hands? I don't know. I feel like giving them thought seize probably isn't the right move here. I can hard cast the architect on my turn. They're at 12. We have 7, 10, 12. Alright, so let's see what happens. Sure. Okay. So the shadow's pretty big. Um, hmm. I guess like wow, this sunken ruins like props to Sodak because like I never thought this would come up as much as it is. Let's cast this. See what they're working with. They're gonna bolt something. Unholy heat. Unfortunate. Okay. Um. I think I take the dress down because of the cycles. And then I can get in for three, putting them to seven. This would only become a six, six. Okay, and pass the turn. Okay. What was your draw step? Land, okay. I think they're just dead on board if they pump, right? Yeah, no blocks. So the way that it will work out is these two are effectively unblockable. And then they'll block this and then take one more and it's just game. 
I can counter their drawn in the lock. Okay, so that's going to do it. And our opponent concedes. All right, so game three coming up. Had I drawn the ley lines that game, they would have been very bad. <laughs> uh, maybe I just don't do that here. Maybe I just accept their discard. I, like, I could also maybe board in some number of subtlety, but I don't know if I love that. Seems a little bit risky here. Let's try this out. I'll do no ley lines. Game three versus Grixis Shadow. Seems fine to me. It'd be better on the play though, because like a turn one Ragavan is going to like sort of mess up this double grief hand. Looted Delta. Watery Grave. You got it. All creatures all the time. They took a grief. Draw. Living End right on time. So let's start off by evoking this grief pitching Living End. Okay. Let's take the monkey. I think they should have led on the monkey, personally. Or am I supposed to take the drown? I think it's the monkey. I feel like I can be drowned at some point. Okay. So, I would guess that their turn here is probably just going to be like Lango. Really, you drew a spell? Uh, so they use Tarn. We can cross that off. You're at 12 now. They drew another monkey. You son of a gun. Yep. Damn. Okay. Riverwinder. You got it. Okay, so let's cycle... Another land. We have to find a Cascade spell. Draw. There we go. The problem with finding Outburst here is that when our opponent dashes their monkey, they'll have Drown and the Locked Man up off of two treasures. Okay, they played Crypt, and now they'll dash their monkey again. Yep. I'm sorry, they're actually going to have three mana. Yep. Okay, so... They have Delta, Drown, Monkey, and then one unknown. So it'd probably be best if we found, like, a Force of Negation or the Mystical Dispute that we boarded in. All right, let's cycle this Architect. So I guess... Maybe I keep Architects in case I cycle into another Grief. Because then I could Grief into the Outburst. Draw. Alright. Just have to pass the turn here. Okay. And Monkey's back. So this is going to knock us down to 11 life, and then we'll probably fetch on our turn, putting us to 10. Force and negation. That's a bummer. Okay. They're at 7. Shadow. So my time's running out here. They have Drown up 2. So... I have a couple things I can do here. I can either try to cycle and hit grief or a force effect. Or I can try to outburst and then untap cycle into another cascade spell. I'm going to cycle. I don't feel like the another land. Cycle. Yikes. Flooding out hard. 
All right, so we have two disputes we could draw here's out. Draw. That just puts me dead. <sighs> yeah, we just didn't draw well enough, I think. 19 lands in our deck and we have six of them. And that's going to do it. Yeah, we're just dead. I guess on my turn I could have cycled trying to hit the uh the one of or one of our two disputes. So let's just cycle here to see if I would have drawn one. So we didn't have a blue card to pitch to this or else that could have done it. Okay. Losses happen, not the end of the world. We're two and one with two rounds left to go. Hey, you're still watching. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you're looking to make a purchase from Card Hoarder, TCG Player, or Amazon, and are looking to support us, you can open up our description down below, and in there you will find our affiliate links. Those same links are found on the homepage of the Epic Storm, but that's not all. We've included a Card Hoarder button on our website that will load the Epic Storm in your Card Hoarder cart to make life simple for you. Round four, and we're on the play. This seems good to me. Keep. Pop out these graveyards, and let's go. Scalding turn pass. And an opposing scalding turn. Steam vents. Into the old monkey. Let's cycle the street wraith. Because I don't want to have to shock if I don't draw. Okay, well, I drew, ended up drawing a card that I could cycle. But if I didn't, I would have just gotten a tap land. Okay, cycle the curator. Good deal. Mishra's bobble. Okay. Draw. We drew a river winder. So this is the, I, I think it's just better to have two creatures in the graveyard instead of the wake, or waker of waves, I should say. The Ragavan's going to get in, we'll follow the 13 life. Okay, what do you reveal? It's a card. They're allowed to cast it. Okay, so we're going to fetch. Grab that island and double cycle. Keep the architects here in case I draw grief. So smart. Let's cast this grief. Good grief. Okay. Just a whole buttload of removal, huh? Let's take that arc, arc, arc mage charm. Green, red, green, blue, agent. Ding dong. Game number one over is it? I think we probably want these disputes again. I'm not sure if I actually want the borrower. I think I just might want to bring the disputes. Shave uh, two acres here, call it a day. Okay. This is fine. We do need a Cascade spell, but we have Grief, we have Force. There's a lot of interaction here. Turn one Steam Vents into Monkey. You got it. Okay, give me a Cascade spell back. Draw. Not quite. Okay, play the Canal, and then I'm just going to cast this Grief. See what they're working with here. That way I can make better educated decisions. And another Ragavan Blood Noon. I think I just take the Consider here. I'm going to be lazy and just cycle the Curator. So they do have turn two Blood Moon. Oh, that's assuming if they draw a land. My bad. Okay, so I go to 18. They had a Misty. Channeler? Sure. 
And visions. Bobble goes to the graveyard off surveil. Now they get to draw a card and scry two. Two on the bottom with no land drop. Okay. Draw. Unfortunately, another land for us. Need that cascade spell. Okay, so we're going to take five going to 13. I think I'm fine with that. Sanctum. Did you draw a land? Expressive iteration. Hmm. It's like kind of greedy here, but I kind of want to force this and then cycle, hoping to hit a cascade spell and then just like wrath them. Like by countering this, I could maybe stop them from ever getting back in the game. Because the window of them killing me versus. I guess I technically get one more turn if I allow if they try to play Blood Moon. All right, I'm going to let this go. All right, and they found steam vents. And they didn't play a land for turn. Good deal. Okay. So let's grab the island and hopefully cycle into a cascade spell here. Cycle architects into grief. Now that I just discarded my black card. Well, we found the cascade spell. Breeding pool. All right, so the fear here is that they have uh, force negation. If this was violent outburst, we could force back, but we just don't have that luxury. Okay, target them with the architects. Um, put vents on top. Okay. We can bounce the Merc Tide on our next turn. Iteration, that's fine. So if I bounce the Merc Tide, is it even worth bouncing? Like, should I just... Hmm. I don't even know if it's the right play because then it can come down larger. So maybe I just attack these three into it. So they're at 16, this would be 10, and then next turn these could possibly win. I don't hate it. Or if I swing out and then it's 12, they go to 4, even if they replayed it, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Alright, so I guess I'm going to try to Brazen Borrower here, or Petty Theft. All right, so now they go to four. And the dragon being large just doesn't matter. We won the match. So our opponent misclicked. We got a little bit lucky. Mistakes happen. I haven't played this league perfectly either, so it happens to everyone. Let's just focus on getting that last round and going 4-1. I'm really, really liking this deck. Maybe I'll play it more in the future. If you're looking for more great Magic the Gathering content, definitely check out the Eternal Glory podcast. It is myself, Brian Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We primarily discuss Legacy. That said, a lot of what we talk about transcends all formats. We're available on all major podcast platforms. Welcome to the fifth and final round of this league with Four Color Living End by Sodak. And... This deck seems really good. I don't have any complaints so far. I'm not even sure if I would make any changes. But we're just going to, you know, try to win this last one. That's the plan. Uh, I think we're supposed to keep this, but it's a little bit clunky. I think the plan would be to draw a black card to pitch to grief, cycle this, hit another creature. That would be the best possible. I'm not sure what our opponent's playing here. Draw. Force negation. I think I'm supposed to just pass here. Keep the river winder up in case I need it for the force. What are you playing? Is this like an eggs deck? 
Ah, Fiddlebender. Yeah. Well, I can't force that. Cycle. Okay, draw. This is a little bit awkward. We just have to pass here. So they can sacrifice the star to get something that costs two. Draw. Another grief. Let's uh, pitch cast it. Activate as a sorcery. Okay. What's happening here? So they're trying to get the Grigard heat. I think I'm going to counter this. All right, grief. Okay, three cards left. Portable hold is literally nothing, so let's take the Chrome Star and pass the turn. They drew a land. So now they can play another Chromatic Star. Or cycle that, that's fine too. Two mana. What are you doing? Sure. Oh, they're going to fiddle bend it for something that costs two. I could have forced that, but like I don't think there's anything for two that really matters, but I could be wrong. Yeah, like I don't care about Icar Wellspring. Have fun. Okay. Come on, creature. So I'll shock here. And then let's cycle. And then cast Violent Outburst. Or I'm sorry. No, it is Violent Outburst I want to cast. My bad. Because I want the blue for course of uh, negation here. Take the hole. Good deal. Fiddle bend that. You can have a Chrome Star. Okay, so they drew a card. We have 12 points of damage coming in next turn. That Saga doesn't really matter all that much. We're going to knock them down to one. Draw. Get in there. I can hard cast Street Wraith next turn. Okay. Two mana. Thopter Foundry. We're going to cast that the old fashioned way. Does that get the job done? It does. We've taken game number one over Fiddlebender. Good deal. So I think we probably want this Force of Vigor and then these Foundation Breakers. Maybe even the Brazen Borrower, too. 65 cards. Hmm. This might not be a Force of Negation matchup. Like, it seemed a little bit underwhelming. Uh, I could be wrong. It's entirely possible. But I'm going to try no forces. I wonder if you're supposed to board in subtlety here. I don't really know. Because their deck seems kind of bad when they don't have a uh, Fiddlebender. Hmm. Let's try it. I'm up for experimenting. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Like, it's fine. It's not going to be the end of the world. Let's do it. We have the subtlety. Nice. Keep. When it went to six cards, okay. What is drained is fine. Don't really care all that much about that. Hollowed Fountain. Well, I can't force a negation that with the subtlety in my hand, so that happens. Draw. We do have four cards in our deck that answer this. So my plan was to just never let them have the Fiddlebender to find this card. 
But here we are. Chrome Star, sure. All right, let's find our foundation breakers. Cycle this river winder. Good grief, draw. I think we just play the pool tapped. Pass the turn. And now Saga goes up to two. So if they have a land here, they can make another construct. Yikes. Is Cascade from the library? It's casting from exile. So I believe I can still cast the living end to remove a bunch of constructs. Draw. Living end. Perfect. Uh, let's cast this grief. Are you rebuke? Hmm. Yeah, I think I just take the rebuke here. So now they get a construct in their upkeep. They can make another construct, or I guess because they played the saga, they can just wait till the end step. Okay, so technically they didn't need to make one there because the other one, it's fine. All right, maybe, never mind, that's not true because the missing land drop. I'm wrong. So uh, if they didn't draw a land, that is the right play. Sure. All right, so now I take five going to 15. No land drop. So I believe I can still cast the the living end here. It just doesn't do anything. Except it should remove these constructs from play because they're going to the graveyard. They just never come out of the graveyard into play. Sure, you have a Grafdigger's Cage in play. <laughs> okay. So that was a good deal for me. And now the Saga cannot make uh, a construct and now they go down to one land. Sure, you can have all the graveyard hate you want. I'm going to beat you down the old-fashioned way. Okay. Now they're playing their Thopter Foundry, which is fine. Um, like, it is what it is. They're low on resources, so it's not going to be the end of the world. From Star, sure. Draw. Let's do some cycling here. Uh, let's do blue blue. Why not? So I'm never going to be able to cast this river winder. So let's get rid of that. But the curator and the subtlety, I'm not so sure uh, if I want to cycle those because I can cast these and just start the beat down. Cycle this again. Grief. Okay, so I missed the fourth land there. You know what? I'm going to cycle. All right, we found the foundation breaker. That's good. Get in there. They'll go to 12. Pass the turn. I guess I shouldn't. I have a subtlety in my hand. I shouldn't have six. Okay, so the, the, you get to use th uh, the foundry here to sacrifice the chrome star to draw a card without spending mana on the activation. They got a blocker and got to draw a card out of this uh, Chrome Star. Spell bomb, sure. Okay. Draw another foundation breaker. Get in there. And let's evoke. I have to blow up the spell bomb first. By doing it this way, this creature will go to the graveyard before. So this way I can theoretically live again this Foundation Breaker back. Okay. Going up to three lands now. Sure. That is a good card with their Thopter Foundry, though. Going and clawing their way back into this. 
slide that down here so that way we can see a little bit more clearly. Okay. Draw. There goes into play tapped. Whoops. Evoke this, destroy that cage. Then, yeah, let's get that out of here. Okay, and now I'm going to attack with the Shardless Agent. If they want to double block, it's actually good for me because it will come back on the next living end. So I don't need to use the subtlety to keep it alive. Yeah, that's fine. Good deal. Okay, they're down to 12. Only two artifacts. My best draw would probably be a black card to pitch to this grief. Blue white. Sword. Okay. So they have the Thopter Sword combo online now. You got it. Okay, come on, Doc. Give me a black creature. Draw. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Okay. Target them with the grief. Take the whir. I'm going to pitch this. You can get rid of their uh, thopter. Why didn't that work? Is it because it's a token and not a creature spell? That might have been why. And then we play this. This will be the last living end in our deck. Okay. Grief. Destroy this. And then destroy the spell bomb. Yes. Yes. Grief. Destroy the foundry. Good deal. This tech's really powerful. All right. I would expect a concession here, but let's see what happens. Fiddlebender is not going to be enough. All right. Maybe I'm wrong. We found our red source to pump our creatures. How lucky. The alternative mode on uh, this spell. Ugh. So they can block a choo-choo and then take not enough until I cast this. Now we outburst. Red, colorless, green. Pump spell. Let the damage go through. That's going to get the job done. Woo, woot. 4 1. Would you look at that? My first time playing four color living end. So deck built a very good deck. Uh, this seems really awesome. I think the only card that I wasn't in love with was the Waker, but Waker was also fine at times. Like it was never bad. It's just everything else seemed like it belonged. Like the sideboard felt really planned, and I didn't really know what I was doing, and it still felt good. Uh, it's just like this card's kind of clunky. That's my only thought. Maybe I'm not using it correctly. If I'm not using it correctly, let me know why. Uh, I'm always interested in learning about that. And uh, why not? Let's open up our chest. Let's see if we get anything good here. Uh, looks like hot garbage to me. What is this? Hot garbage like I thought. Oh, it's the Black Champion. Yeah. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate you. But once again, happy holidays and keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.